So the concept for this shoot is how do we simulate daylight? But then I also wanted the model to move around a lot. And with strobes, a lot of people don't understand the benefits of flash duration. What flash duration does is basically the duration that the flash is exposing the model becomes your new shutter. So if you're shooting with a light with a very slow flash duration, you'll actually get blur. And if you're shooting with a light that has a very high flash duration, you'll get a very tack sharp image. A lot of people think just because they're shooting with strobes that it's always gonna freeze the model, that's very untrue. A lot of modern day strobes will now tell you what their flash duration is, but you always wanna measure it. There's things that could affect it like the age of the bulb or if you're using a power pack and extension cable, the extension cable can also shorten your flash duration and lower your power at times. Not only do you want a meter for exposure, not only do you want a meter to balance your lights, like for instance, for this shot, I metered across the white background to make sure I can get the white as even as possible to kind of simulate sunlight coming down. But then I also want to dial my light in so I can get the optimal flash duration. With the pack we were using, the optimal flash duration was at about power 4.8, somewhere in the middle. Usually high power is the slowest and low power to some degree is the fastest, but it's not always true. And the only way to check it is with the Sekonic 858. Not only can you measure the flash duration, you can also see the flash curve to see how the flash is kind of coming up and down. You can set it to T1 or T5. And if you look at the pictures that we shot today, you can see the clear difference. One of the strobes we were using had a flash duration of one, one thirty-sixth of a second at T1 and the other one was close to one three thousandth of a second at T1. A little tip when using flash duration, I find that if you use T1 versus T5, which is a number a lot of manufacturers put in their literature, T1 gets you results closer to if you were shooting with a shutter that had the equivalent speed. So not only are we metering to make sure our light is even, not only are we metering for exposure, we're now metering flash duration to see if we can also freeze motion. Now let's talk about this set. In order to make it look a little bit more like sunlight, I wanted to add an obstruction, almost as if there was like a building or something there casting this huge shadow. Oftentimes you don't see an object casting a huge shadow like this inside of a studio. So it's another element that's somewhat unexpected that makes this shot look like it was lit just with sun. And in terms of lighting, we're only using one light. The one light we're using is a bi-tube head and a magnum reflector pointed directly at the model so that we can get one large crisp shadow. Another thing that we did in order to show you guys the difference between slow flash duration and fast flash duration, if you're wondering how we did this test, we plugged in one pack into one side of a bi-tube head and the other pack in the other side of a bi-tube head. And then we fired each one individually so one had a very fast flash duration of one three thousandth of a second, and the other had a very slow flash duration of about one one hundred and thirty-fifth of a second. So not only do we want a meter for exposure, we also want a meter for flash duration. <laughs>